we're going to take a look at how you can divert waste from the landfill and put it right back into the yard using the power of worms on this week's Science Fridays. The basic materials for this project are a plastic container and a lid. I'm going to be using this 12 inch plant pot and this lid made from a plant dish to make my worm tunnel. Now you don't need to use the same things, you can use any other kind of plastic container that's going to hold up in the ground. The first thing you need to do is cut holes that are about 1 inch in diameter all around the sides of the pot. I tried and failed with scissors and ended up using a box cutter to make this one. The worms won't care about the shape of the hole, just that they can get into your tunnel. That process was going to take a little too long, so I donned some safety goggles and got out the power tools. So this is a one inch hole saw that we're going to use to drill a hole in here. Should go quite a bit faster, and that's what I ended up using for the rest of I ended up using the whole saw for the rest of them because it punched that hole pretty easy and it made it nice and even. It doesn't really matter if your hole looks like this or this as long as you have somewhere for the worms to get in and out the sides of this pot. After quite some time drilling, I was left with a bucket that looked like Swiss cheese. I wanted to get rid of the dangling plastic bits to avoid getting them into the soil, so I used a box cutter to remove them. Once we have all of the burrs off of our holes, then we use to our last modification of this bucket, which is going to be cutting off the bottom. This is going to allow all the juices that the worms produce to fall out, as well as the casings to mix with the ground below it. So let's get anything that's sharp enough, like a pair of scissors, um, or a box knife that'll cut through this. Just get the bottom off of here. Once you remove the bottom from your bucket, your worm tunnel is ready to go. When burying your tunnel, the most important thing is finding a spot where you're going to use it a lot. So I'm putting it as close to the trash can as I can out in the garden. To figure out how large I needed to make the hole, I took my worm tunnel and simply drilled it down on the surface of the ground to create a kind of template to show myself where to dig and how large I would need the hole. I started digging with a small hand trowel and I wasn't getting anywhere. I decided to grab the big guns, or maybe the small ones, and grabbed a small beet shovel from the shed. I dug with this for a while because I didn't want to completely tear up the whole garden, so I wasn't using the regular size shovel. After digging for some time, I encountered a root, which I suspect belongs to our grapevine. Since the grapevine is relatively young, I didn't want to chance cutting it and starving the grapevine of water. I ended up moving to a space just next to the garden to continue digging. I repeated the process of creating a digging template, and then brushed the mulch out of the area. Underneath the mulch, there is weed guard. Once the worm tunnel fills up with worm casings, or worm poo, you'll want to move it to another location. This may take a few years, but I want to be ready for that time so I kept the flap of weed guard and covered it with some mulch, ready to be deployed when the day comes. After that, all I had to do was dig. I gave up on the small shovel rather quickly and went with the standard size shovel to finish the hole, since I was no longer in the garden bed. I placed the tunnel in the ground and made sure the hole was deep enough for the size of the pot to be level with the ground. Then I filled in the extra space around the pot with dirt. Remember, worms are built for burrowing through the dirt, so they will have no trouble getting to the pot with this dirt in the way. I also placed a bit of garden soil on the bottom to try to get some beneficial garden bacteria into the tunnel. Ideally, you would put some compost from a compost bin in here to introduce bacteria which will help in the decomposition process. I grabbed some vegan table scraps from our green bin to put in on top of the garden soil. 
The worms will be able to digest most organic material, but you should avoid putting meat in the tunnel as it will start to rot, smell, and attract animals. Dairy products also fall into the do not dump list. So consider your worms vegan, aside from eggshells, which are fine to put in as long as they are crushed up. Next I grab some newspaper. You don't need to use newspaper if you don't get one. You can just use other waste paper. Dampen it, and then put it on top of the table scraps. I put this on top of the table scraps to keep a moist environment for the worms. If you've ever seen worms coming out after a rainstorm, you'll know that they dry up if they stay out too long, so we want to keep these worms nice and damp. The last step is to put on the lid and something to weigh it down. I chose a large slab of rock we had lying around to completely cover the top and make the worm tunnel a little less visible. You can use a smaller rock. We use the rock to weigh down the top so it doesn't blow away in the wind and to hopefully keep animals out of the bin. If you're not trying to hide it, any rock will do. The only thing left to do is wait a couple of weeks to see if there's any worm activity. Once worms begin to break down the food, you can begin to add more. Over time, the worms will leave their worm castings in the area around the tunnel and inside the tunnel itself. As the tunnel begins to fill, you can remove these castings and put them into your garden. They're going to look like a rich, dark soil. Vermicomposting is a great way to reduce food waste and reach for sustainability. A worm tunnel is one of the simplest ways to do it since the worm products go directly into the soil and the worms come from your local environment. I hope this inspires you to figure out ways you can increase the sustainability of your household and I will see you next week for another Science Fridays.